what's the point in eating healthy if you're just going to feel like crap anyway? If I'm going to be miserable, I might as well eat what I want. I eat a lot of volume. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks between every meal. Um, I was always eating and always hungry. I just, I can't get over it, actually. I'm still amazed. I think my friends and family are sick of me talking about it. But IBS, first of all, it saved my job. The sensation of not having anything going on in my stomach is so foreign to me. My brain would always consume consumed with you know, my stomach and what it was doing. And, you know, if I had to go to the bathroom or pass gas or whatever, and this is what's taught in the vegan community, fat gums up your insulin receptors. Mm-hmm. So welcome everybody today. We have Gina chatting with us today. Gina, how are you this morning? Good. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing well. Well, thank you for doing this. And you're, if I'm not mistaken, you're somewhere in New York, upstate New York, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, is that correct? Yep. I'm, um, uh, you know, where the Saratoga region is I about have, 20 minutes north of Albany. Okay. Okay. I've never, I've heard of Albany. <laughs> Obviously, it's a state mm-hmm. cap. I've never actually been there. I've spent very little time in New York outside of just a little bit of time in New York city. Well, I guess you have kind of an interesting thing to tell us about. So tell us a little about your background, if you don't mind to get started. Sure. I'm 52. I'm married. I have three kids and I'm a dental hygienist. I've been pretty physically active most of my adult life. I was a gym rat in my 20s. I did karate in my 30s, ran in my 40s. I've always been pretty active as far as diet. I always kind of tried to follow what the current recommendations were. Back in the 90s, it was fat makes you fat. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, did a lot of low carb or excuse me, low fat dieting. And, you know, for the most part, I was never overweight or anything like that. I've always been able to manage my weight. But in my 40s, I've been running for a few years. And I was doing really well. I was doing a lot of like 5Ks all the way up to ultra marathons. And in 2019, I was 49. And I wanted to do a 50 mile race for my 50th birthday mm. in 2020. <laughs> so I signed up for that and, you know, things were going all right. But toward the end of 2019, I started having some health issues. I'd go out for a run and I get really fatigued. My legs would get really heavy. It felt like they were in wet cement. I'd have trouble breathing. It was like a weird progression of downhill. I was having fatigue in my regular everyday life. I started getting tingling and numbness in my feet. And oh, my one leg in particular, I started getting vision problems in my one eye. And then I woke up one morning and then half of my torso was like numb on one side. Wow. Yeah. So I went, you know, thinking it like it was MS, you know, um, I went through a lot of testing. I had MRIs. I had a, a spinal tap, which I would not recommend to anyone. <laughs> that was horrible. But ultimately, they never really found anything, just never figured it out. I just felt felt miserable. I was always tired. I was always mentally drained. I, you know, had trouble even just thinking. And I thought, well, that's, I guess that's what happens when you turn 50. You know, you just get old and things just don't work. And started getting a lot of aches and pains, bone pain, joint aches. You know, I get up out of bed and all my joints hurt. And uh, so I was kind of, kind of salty about it all. Cause I had been really active and fit. And then all of a sudden I was kind of knocked out, you know, physically just feeling old and crummy. <laughs> yeah. That's that. I mean, that that's the common experience of so many people when they get, you know, later in life and they get in their forties and fifties, they do start to feel that way. So we, we kind of consider, no, I, you know, the same thing when I was in my, mid forties, I was starting to have stuff and I was like, well, hell, I'm just getting old and, and, you know, realize that, that, that wasn't necessarily the case. I wonder, did you ever think, you know, you're training for a 50 mile run? Did ever, ever thought that maybe I'm overtraining? I'm just wearing myself out. Did you scale that back at any point or where, where did that play a role in this? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. I did kind of, kind of more after the fact kind of thought about that, that, you know, maybe it was just a little too taxing on my body because, yeah, at the end of 2019, I did my first ultra. So I had some high mile and I was doing trail races. I was doing a lot of kind of hard stuff. So, you know, kind of later on, I kind of thought that 
that might have played a part in it for sure. Yep. So, so not, you know, Spinal Tap, which, yeah, like you said, it's, it's it may not be the most fun experience for sure. But so you had all this work up, and they, was there ever a diagnosis? Was it just, hey, we don't know? It's here, take this antidepressant, yeah. maybe or something. I don't know. What did they? What did? What? What was it? What was the net effect of going to the physicians? So they they tested for Lyme disease. They tested for you know looked at like inflammation markers, and they really never never found anything. They said I, you know. When they did my MRI, they, you know, kind of diagnosed migraines, which I already knew I get migraines, but that was about it. So I just kind of for six months just didn't do anything as far as I didn't do any running or anything physical and um, kind of had a big pity party for myself and, you know, kind of ate kind of crummy and gained about 15, 20 pounds and finally got frustrated with sitting around and said, well, I'm just going to start walking. And I started going out for walks. And then next thing you know, I tried to run mailbox to mailbox or whatever, and kind of slowly built up, not not to what I had been doing, but kind of adding running back in. And then I thought, well, if I can really hone in my diet, you know, maybe if I can really just have the perfect diet, maybe I can really be in good shape. So my best friend and my running partner is vegan. Mm -hmm. And so I said, well, she's pretty healthy and everywhere you look, everybody's talking about plant-based diets and seems like that's the way to go. So that's what I did. I, uh, for 18 months, I went vegan and like whole food, plant-based vegan, Mm -hmm. not, you know, the junk food vegan or anything. And got really into it for a while, watched all the documentaries, followed all the big name doctors, like Dr. Greger and... (laughs) all of those. And I even got a certification in plant-based nutrition from eCornell because I was kind of thinking, oh, you know, maybe I can help people or do health coaching with this or whatever. Mm -hmm. And in the beginning, I did feel pretty good. I got back to running, but I'm not really sure how far in I was, maybe a year in when my health started going south again. Mm -hmm. And then I had a whole slew of things, (laughs) things, <laughs> a cascade of things that happened. I, let's see, I had anemia. I ended up having gallbladder surgery. I had a hysterectomy. I had horrible IBS. The IBS was so bad. I almost had to quit my job. Mm. It was so bad. And, um, what, yeah. <laughs> while, while this is going on the IBS and you lost your gallbladder, sounds like, and you know, you've got all these other issues going on, what, you know, you got your friend who's a vegan, you're, you're actually, you know, you've got an actual certificate from a, from Cornell university. You, you know, you're not getting your information from the back of a cereal box. I mean, you, you actually studied this stuff. And so what kind of adjustments were you making as these sort of symptoms were cropping up? Like, you know, your gut's hurting. I'm either going to add something or cut something out. How did you adjust? How did you deal with that while, while still on a, on a, on a vegan plant-based diet? Yeah, I, I kept, thinking I must have certain food sensitivities, you know, like, you know, I would say, you know, I think it's spinach. I don't think I can eat spinach. So I take that out or certain beans. I can only eat these beans, but not those that kept taking things out and putting things in. Cause I was certain that if I could just find which thing in my diet was really bothering me, maybe I could kind of really get it on, on course, but I just could never figure it out. You know, I could never figure out which foods it was. What, what aspects of a, of a plant-based diet did you like? I mean, was there something that, did you liked about it? I mean, with variety, I don't know. I mean, some people, some people like it for various reasons. Was there anything you liked about it in particular? Some of the food, but to be honest, I was, ne- I've never been really a huge vegetable person. Mm-hmm. Like I don't, I like salads and I like, you know, broccoli, things like that. So it def- I definitely had to push myself to really enjoy it. You know, I knew like beans and legumes are, you know, are kind of necessary, you know, to try to get your protein. So I kind of really had to push to like those, you know, I kind of got into the cooking of it, you know, for a while I'd watch cooking videos and kind of got into the prep, but it is kind of intensive when it comes to food prep, you know, there's kind of a lot to do. You need a food processor and you need a blender and you need a, you know, yeah, it seems like it can be a lot of work. How was your appetite during that? Was it, were you, did you feel like you had enough to food, enough to eat or are you hungry quite a bit or how did you do with that? I ate a lot. I ate a lot of volume. Mm-hmm. Um, I probably, I ate breakfast, lunch, dinner, 
and snacks between every meal. Um, I was always eating and always hungry. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, it sounds like IBS. And so obviously your, maybe your bowel function was not where you'd want it to be. I mean, either bloating, constipation, you know, diarrhea. I don't know what, what IBS kind of ha- has a spectrum of things. I, I honestly think they should just rename IBS. You're eating wrong damn food. I think and yeah, that would be, <laughs> I think yeah. it, it represents something like between 35 and 50% of all gastroenterologist visits are for IBS. It's so darn common now. So, so the whole time, you know, you're, were you still running with your vegan friend while you're doing all this stuff? And were you, were you maybe mentioning to her, Hey, I don't feel so good about this and that. And did you guys have any discussions around that? Yeah. For the most part, we'd have a good time talking about vegan stuff. Cause I was, you know, very pretty positive about it, even though I was still having some troubles. I just kind of figured it was unique to me. I just needed to tweak it and figure it out. But she knew I had stomach issues because we'd be running together and I'd have to stop <laughs> mm-hmm. to go take care of that when we were running. So she knew I was having a lot of stomach issues. She does well on it. She, you know, doesn't seem to have any health issues, but you know, I definitely struggled for sure. How was your, how was your, how was your running performance? How did you feel on that? Did you feel pretty good on that? Were you able to run okay? I did. I think pretty good. I definitely wasn't as fast as I used to be a few years prior, mm-hmm. um, but I think I, I was doing well and, until I wasn't. <laughs> it's, it's like, it was like a upward curve of doing better and then kind of coming back down. And then I, I again, lost the ability to run the second time. What, what do you said you felt good for a period of time. What do you attribute that to? Was it, were you, were you eating, you said you had, you kind of had a junkie diet for a period of time. Was that, but then he cleaned it up again. I mean, what did you cut out of your diet that you felt made, made you feel? A lot of people, vegans would say, what's, well, you know, meat and dairy and, and that's why I feel better. But what, what do you think you're cutting out that made you feel better? Yeah, I think because there was a period of time when I was eating junk food and, you know, processed food and, you know, I like really refined all that stuff out and, you know, it was mainly fruits and vegetables. So I just, I think it cleaned up a lot. Yeah. So it's removing processed food from your diet, which I think is generally beneficial for everybody, regardless of what diet you're on at the end. You know, why you're having all these gut issues. Well, obviously, if you have your gallbladder, you, you got back into the medical healthcare system. So interesting, your gallbladder came out. Did they, I mean, gallstones, did you just have an infected gallbladder? Why did they, why did they, you said gallbladder. I'm assuming it's a gall, cholecystectomy, but yes, correct me if, yeah. if I'm wrong, but yeah. Yeah, so I had been having these episodes of really intense pain right below my sternum. It felt like a like a rod going straight through me. And that's, I was trying to figure out food. I was thinking like a food was triggering it. And like, oh, I think that happens after I eat, like I said, spinach or something like that. And it just kept happening periodically. And then I finally had it scanned and they thought they saw a polyp. So that's why they had the surgery. But I guess it turns out I didn't really have one, but they said it was chronically inflamed. Okay. And I'm just wondering if, you know, I don't know my non-medical opinion, but just, you know, most of my life I've eaten a very low fat diet pretty much. So I don't know if that's contributed to it or. Well, I mean, some people will, will, you know, make the, make the argument that because the gallbladder is supposed to contract and squeeze out bile every time you eat fat, which is supposed to be part of our diet. If you, if you don't eat enough, then it doesn't contract enough and stuff sort of pools there and you develop the sludge from, from inactivity. And so that can lead to, problems down the road, but you know, the, the, the time you had the neurological issues, you know, when you were just super fatigued and, and then the gallbladder out and then the IBS, was there, did any of the physicians ever discuss with you diet? Do they, do they tell you, Hey, change your diet in this way or that way or anything like that? Was it ever addressed? No, no, nope. I've never been asked what I eat. <laughs> interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. I mean, I, 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 it's a shame quite honestly, because it's so, mm-hmm. so incredibly important. Okay, so you you said about eighteen months of of a vegan diet starting. I think you said in 2019, 2020 or something like that. Yeah, it was like twenty twenty, mid twenty twenty. What made yeah. you decide I, this isn't for me anymore? What was the final straw that said I, I can't do this anymore? I didn't actually quit it because I had it with the diet. So after I had my gallbladder out, then the other issue started. I started having issues with my cycle. I started. It turned out I I had endometriosis and fibroid and, you know, all those things. I had to have a hysterectomy. I had anemia so bad that they wanted to do a a blood transfusion. And I kind of held them off on that. And I ended up with four weekly iron infusions. I just, I kept having one after the other, after the other of these things that were just, you know, I felt miserable. 
So I kind of quit again, the same way, I, the same reason I stopped eating healthy the other time is because I'm like, well, what's the point in eating healthy if you're just going to feel mm-hmm. like crap anyway? You know, if I'm going to be miserable, I might as well eat what I want. So I was still not putting it together. I'm like, there's no sense of eating healthy if I'm just going to feel miserable. So I kind of quit mostly just because I just figured why not just eat whatever I want if I'm going to be miserable. Yeah, yeah um, for, for. It probably wasn't until a couple months after I quit, quit that I kind of looked back and then thought, hmm, I wonder if it was actually not that good for me. <laughs> yeah, potentially. Anemic, you know, that's a, actually, that's a very common issue, particularly, you know, with, with people on vegan diets, particularly women in many cases. What were you trying to do? I mean, because a lot of times it's, it's just related to iron deficiency. Were you actively trying to eat enough iron and how so were you trying to get it from plant sources? How did you deal with iron? Did you, did you know at some point you're, ve- you're, you're, you're iron deficient and you're still vegan? Did you try to make adjustments to the diet at that point? Yeah, no, I didn't actually know I was anemic until I woke up in the middle of the night with my heart pounding and pounding so hard. It was like banging on the mattress uh-huh. <laughs> and, and I was panting. I woke up like panting. And so I went to urgent care and then to the ER and that's when I found out I was anemic, but I didn't realize before then, although I had been feeling fatigued and, you know, I low energy and things, but I didn't really realize I was anemic. What, what sources of iron were you getting in your diet at the time? Do you remember? Probably things like spinach, even though I had a love hate relationship with spinach Mm -hmm. and um, that was probably about it. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Okay. And it's, and, and, you know, just so people, people don't know that the non-heme forms of iron are harder to, harder to absorb. We just, you know, they tend not to be as available to us and, and, you know, things like spinach, you might have issues getting enough, enough iron there. Okay. You go on a plant-based diet, you got your vegan friend, you start out, you're doing better initially and then it starts to decline again. Did you, so when you decided, okay, I'm not going to do this anymore. Did you talk to your friend about that and say, Hey, look, I just can't do this anymore. She actually kidded around with me and she said, eat a piece of steak when I had anemia. <laughs> so she, she actually was telling me to go eat meat. <laughs> good for her. Good for um, her. Good for her. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. She's a great friend. She has never, the, all the years that we've run together, she's never, you know, pushed me toward that diet or anything. So mm-hmm. right now I think she thinks I'm crazy because now she knows what I'm doing and now she thinks I'm crazy. But mm-hmm. yeah, so she was very supportive about all that. Okay. So you decide at some point, Hey, this diet's not for me, you know, I I just just go eat whatever and eat junk and, you know, have fun eating cake and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But at what point did you decide? Cause I know you said you did initially sort of more of an animal based diet and then eventually transitioned to a fully carnivorous diet, but how did that evolve for you? Yeah. So probably several months of, you know, again, another pity party and whatever I wanted. And then I gained 20 pounds. Of course I had a hysterectomy, so it doesn't help. So immediately gained 20 pounds, like right away and feeling miserable again. Now my bones really started to ache, like my joints and like, oh, every morning I'd wake up, everything hurt so bad. And you know, I kept going back and forth. There was a point where I thought about going back to veganism, like I said, oh, I should start eating healthy again. Maybe I'll go back, you know? And then I came across a, a blog post by, I think the girl was the peasant's daughter, I think is the name of it. It was called why I'm no longer vegan. Hmm. And I read it and and I think it was the first time I really kind of dawned on me that it probably wasn't the the best choice for me, you know, food wise. And that kind of set me down a rabbit hole of looking into, you know, diet and food. And I just started devouring everything I could. I've, I've read every, you know, Oh, Brain Energy by Chris Palmer and Big Fat Surprise by Nina Teicholz. And, you know, I watch everything. And I really started to learn about the carnivore diet. And I have a kind of funny story about how I found you. Mm -hmm. I didn't know who you were or that you were a proponent of this diet. I found you during um, that time period when everybody was forced to take a certain medication. Mm -hmm. (laughs) <laughs> and I thought what you were talking about then was pretty spot on and I enjoyed your content, but I had no idea who you were. <laughs> so then as I started down the carnivore rabbit hole, I circled back to your videos and started listening to your content and everything. And uh, so I started, you know, dipping my toe in and moving in the direction. 
And I think what helped for me is I did it slow. So I never, you know, I never experienced like keto flu or anything like that. I had one more race I was training for the, for at the end of 22, it was like November, early November. And I didn't want to mess up my training for that. So I kind of was eating a lot more animal products, but I was keeping in some things like my morning oatmeal and things like that, just because I didn't want anything to go south there. But as soon as that race was over, I started kind of going full steam, cutting things out. And so to, I don't know, about six weeks transition, maybe to full carnivore. Okay. Okay. And how did you feel? I mean, I mean, how, how did you feel? Did you start noticing improvements? Yeah. I just, I can't get over it. Actually. I'm still amazed. I think my friends and family are sick of me talking about it, but like I, one of the first things I noticed, well, IBS, first of all, like it saved my job pretty much <laughs> just that the sensation of not having anything going on in my stomach is so foreign to me. My brain would always consumed with you know, my stomach and what it was doing. And, you know, if I had to go to the bathroom or pass gas or whatever, and that there was no longer a thing. And it was just so, so that was amazing. Waking up in the morning and my bones didn't hurt. My joints didn't hurt. I just, I, I couldn't believe how much energy I had just thing after thing, just started getting better and better. And I feel amazing. I really do. Yeah, that's, 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 that I've heard that many, many times before, certainly. And it's, you know, it is, that's one of the things that shocked me. I was no longer aware of the fact that I was digesting food. Even when I was on a ketogenic diet, eating all the salads and stuff, I always had the perception. I, I could tell what was going on in my guts. It was just perceptible and that becomes almost imperceptible to where, um, you know, digestion pretty, pretty much a, you know, a, an unnoticeable process for the most part for many people on this. So, you know, you transition to this fully meat-based diet, this carnivore diet. What, what's the family thinking at this point? Because you said you got, you know, three kids and, you know, presumably husband and stuff like that. Are they like, she's crazy, she's a crazy vegan, now she's crazy carnivore lady. What, what, what's the family thinking about this stuff? My husband is very supportive because he's seen me over the years, you know, go through the different health things and, and he's whatever – works for me. He's behind. He was behind when I went vegan and he's behind this now. And he probably loves this more because, you know, he's a meat eater, you know? <laughs> so this is probably a little bit more fun for him. Um, and my, my two oldest are grown and out of the house and, you know, but they're really supportive too, but they did see me go through the, the vegan, you know, phase. And now they see this, but they also see how good I feel now. And they saw how terrible I felt before. So they're also really supportive and happy. You know? Yeah, that's good. Good to hear. I mean, were they, were they ever all on what, you know, sometimes when mom goes on a vegan diet, the whole family does, was it, was that ever the situation where they're all like, Oh, great tofu, mm -hmm. tofu, turkey again, or something like that. What was a, how was Yeah, No, I never, you know, I made regular meals for my husband and my son. A couple of times I'd try to get them to try things. Mm -hmm. uh, one time I made tofu scramble, which is supposed to be like scrambled eggs. Mm -hmm. And they're like, mm, no. <laughs> yeah, that's that's, um, how, yeah, I'd, that's so. how I'd be too. I'd be like, no, thanks. I'm not eating this stuff. But anyway. So, well, you mentioned, you know, on a vegan diet, eating, you know, three meals a day, snacks in between every meal, constantly hungry, constantly eating, constantly thinking about food, difficult prep. How does that contrast to, to what you're doing today? What do you, what do you eat on a daily basis these days? I think I must be unusual for a carnivore. I still eat three meals a day right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I eat usually four scrambled eggs with goat cheese in the morning with a nice big pat of butter on them. For lunch, I bring a couple of hamburger patties. I have a little like crock pot that keeps them warm and I throw some butter in there. So at lunchtime, you know, they're all nice and warm and have melted butter all over them. And dinner is usually either ribeye steaks, more hamburger patties. Usually it's beef every once in a while. I'm trying to do like seafood once a week, like salmon or something. Chicken is usually either thighs or drumsticks, but just like everybody else says, I'm not as excited about chicken as I am about beef. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, I think that most, it's fair to say most people that do this end up that way. They're kind of chicken. Yeah. <laughs> if I got to, yeah. I'd rather have a steak. <laughs> and so 
<clears throat> obviously, you know, you said you went through the 90s, a low fat craze, you never had a weight problem. So it wasn't like, it's interesting, you know, because a lot of people will blame a lot of these health issues just on obesity. And you had health issues despite not not dealing with obesity, which is something that I see not infrequently either, that, that there's more than just obesity affecting things, mm-hmm. particularly when it comes to gut health. So any concerns about, oh my gosh, I'm eating all this fat now, it's, it's going to kill me. Is there, what are your thoughts about that? No, I'm not concerned. I I just keep looking at, you know, a lot of the research out there. I love learning about the history of um, nutrition and kind of kind of where we went off the rails and stuff. So I'm not really concerned about uh, cholesterol and all that. And I feel pretty comfortable with all of those. When you got your nutrition cert- cert- certificate, certificate from Cornell, they were probably not advocating for a carnivore diet. I'm guessing. Is that fair to say? No, 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 not at all. And I, I'm trying to, I want to kind of go back and look at what they put f- for their information, their studies, because I kind of want to re-examine them now. Mm-hmm. You know, I haven't really gone back to any of it, but I, I just want to see what their basis is and why they say what they say. Um, yeah, a lot, a, lot of, a lot of epidemiologic studies and, and, and that sort of stuff, which I think is just... I mean, it doesn't really do much to inform. And it, it amazes me they keep repeating these studies. They keep paying for them. They keep doing the same sort of studies over and over, which don't show anything. I mean, they they, yeah. they don't show any. They're not very good studies, and why they keep doing them is amazing to me. So, how did so eating three meals a day? You know, just kind of standard carnivore stuff. How did how did your are you back to running now? Are you back doing that stuff again? I was for a little bit, but I kind of had a little change of heart of how I want to work out. Mm -hmm. Um, I still kept thinking, well, maybe the running is, you know, that long extended high heart rate, you know, maybe it's not the greatest for me. So, so I'm back to weight training (laughs) and I do a little bit of cardio in the gym. I walk a lot, but I started looking at ideal fitness too. And I think, you know, at my age, especially I probably should be building muscle Mm -hmm. How do you find that happening? How, how's that going for you, by the way? I mean, you um, haven't, haven't, you know, you haven't been caught over that long, but I mean, are you finding you're having some more success building muscle? Oh yeah. I'm getting really strong. Like when I was in my twenties for how little I am, I was used to be really strong. Like when I'd go in the gym, I'd lift for my size, pretty heavy. And, and I remember always being kind of proud of the fact of being pretty strong for my size. And then, you know, as I got older, I felt like I, you know, I had trouble lifting a laundry basket, you know, and now it's like coming back. Like I feel like as strong as I did in my twenties, you know, the muscles coming back really nice and it's been fun. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a great, a, a great feeling. And it's a great place to be in, you know, and that's, I think it's like you, you mentioned your postmenopausal female, not a very big person, but it's, it's so incredibly important to get stronger. I see, a lot of women in your situation fast forward 20, 25 years and they're in, in the ER with a broken hip because, you know, they, they haven't, their bone mineral density has decayed and they're just, they're just too frail. And so that's, that's good for you for figuring that out. Do you find that you, do you worry about protein? Cause you talked about on a vegan diet, you're trying to, you know, eat enough beans and lentils and other legumes to, mm-hmm. to make up for that. Are you focusing on how much protein you eat daily or you just kind of eat to appetite at this point? Yeah, I just eat to appetite. I mm-hmm. I don't really think about I'm trying to be higher fat, you know, as best I can understand it, but I'm not really kind of picking it apart or anything. I'm just kind of eating what I feel like eating. Yeah, I mean what you're describing you're eating, you're probably covering all your protein bases. It's pretty it's pretty easy to get all the protein you need on a carnivore diet. One, it's it's you know, more likely to be bioavailable. It's it, amino acid profile is is what we need, you know, and the ratios we need them. And, and, you know, animal products tend to be pretty protein dense for the most part. Mm-hmm. Uh, have you had any sort of major downsides since switching over to a carnivore diet? Any like negatives that you can think of? No, not really. I think once or twice, I think, and I don't know if it's like oxalate dumping or whatever, but I had a couple of weeks in, I had my hand like ached really bad. And that was about it. (laughs) I never had any digestive problems. I know some people go, they, you know, have diarrhea for a little bit. Never had that happen. No, I 
haven't had any negatives really. So, so pretty good overall. And and your yeah. your friend who's the vegan, she's she's still your friend, but she thinks you're kind of a little bit nutty. How how because you're not running? I guess you're not really running much. How do you interact with her now? Do you see her in the neighborhood, or how do you how do you typically see her? And you know how, how does this yeah. how does this topic come up? Interestingly. Yeah. She was a little sad. She told me I broke up with her, but we now go to the gym together. She got a membership at the gym. So we work out at the gym together mm-hmm. and we go, you know, do lunch and things like that. So. Oh, I, I can imagine lunch must be interesting. Where do you go? Where are you going to go to find, <laughs> to find that contrasting menu? <laughs> I know it's pretty funny. The last time we went out, I think uh, I got a meal, you know, like a steak that came with like vegetables mm-hmm. and she just ordered a salad and then I gave her all my vegetables and I had my steak. <laughs> yeah, that works out pretty well. I went out with my brother and sister-in-law and they were vegetarian at the time. We, Me and my partner were both pretty much carnivore and the same thing. We ordered the food and you guys can have the vegetables. We'll eat all the meat and it worked out pretty well. It was kind of a nice funny little thing to think about. Um, when you're in the, so, I mean, you're, at least you guys are working out together and, and, you know, bravo for her, for, for trying to, trying to get stronger. Can you, are you stronger than her? Can you push her around a little bit? <laughs> well, it's funny. Late, we haven't been to get to the gym in a few weeks. When we first started out, she was actually stronger than me, mm-hmm. but she's, she's taller. She's, she's like, mm-hmm. I want to say she's like five, seven, I'm five, two. <laughs> so she's pretty strong. But I think now she had to take some time off because she had some shoulder problems. So she took some time off. So I think when we get back in the gym, I think I'm going to beat her now. (laughs) We'll see how that goes. Good for you. Do you, you know, have you been back to a physician since you've changed this diet? No, I go to see the hematologist next month. And so we'll do a lot of blood work, but I haven't seen a a GP in a while. Mm -hmm. I, I suppose I should at some point get like, some good blood work done to see where, where I'm at with all of that. Yeah. And then, and then the reason for the hematologist visit was just to follow up on the anemia, I'm assuming. Yeah. Okay. They, for a while would see me like every <clears throat> three months and now it's every six months. Okay. So. And I imagine, you know, you don't sound like you have any symptoms anymore. It's not like you're doing pretty, pretty good with that. Now, let me ask you, cause you said you work as a, as, as a dental hygienist. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So let's talk about, dental health and diet. Is that something that, I mean, you notice, you know, you notice some people on certain diets have really problematic teeth or other people, do you ever, does that ever come up as part of a discussion? Maybe now that you've sort of delved into this, is that something you observe? Yeah, absolutely. When I was in hygiene school and, you know, before really knowing about carnivore diet, we would talk to patients about diet as far as extra sugars, you know, don't drink soda, don't eat a lot of extra sugar, that kind of stuff. But I don't think I really fully understood how big of a role diet plays until recently. I can see people when they come in, you can tell they're when they're metabolically unhealthy, they're usually, you know, they're overweight, they're, they have diabetes, they have a whole bunch of other kind of conditions altogether. And then their oral health is a mess and it just, it all interplays so much. So I've been kind of, I'm supposed to only kind of limit my nutritional advice to, you know, talking about preventing cavities and things like that. But I've kind of, a few patients I've talked to a little bit about the carnivore diet because I see them and I see them struggling with their health. And I just feel like if they just knew about this, you know, maybe, maybe they would feel better. Maybe they could, you know, turn their health around. So I've talked to a few people about it. What about try to tie it into their oral health and everything? Have, have you noticed? Because I'm sure you're conscious of, conscientious about your own oral health. Have you noticed a difference between vegan to carnivore? Any changes in your oral health? Um, they they don't get. They always feel clean. You know, like usually when you wake up in the morning, and I think it's just a carb heavy diet. You wake up and if you you know run your tongue around your mouth, you can kind of feel the plaque building up. And I just don't get that anymore. I've been pretty fortunate that I don't really have too many, you I know, mean, too many health, oral health problems. So other than that, and um, not, I, I think I don't really notice any bad breath or anything like that, but I don't think I had too much of that before either. In your, in the, in the course of your job, do you ever run into people that are, that are on vegan diets and having issues with, with dental caries and things like that? Because the literature sort of suggests that, they tend to have a higher rate of problems with that. Is that something you've observed? 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. People tell me they're, you know, mostly plant-based or plant-based or, you know, they have a lot of processed foods and you can just see it in their mouth. They have a lot of decay. They have a lot of buildup, gum problems. I had a patient recently and she was, she told me she just had gotten diagnosed with diabetes. She's probably in her mid fifties. And I just, I had a feeling she was going to tell me she was vegan. Like she was lean. So she wasn't, you know, she wasn't overweight, like, you know, so, and then, so we were talking about her diabetes and I said, you know, have you ever like heard about, I, I always talk about keto because people have heard keto more, more than carnivore. So I, I said, have you ever heard considered a, like a keto, keto diet to help with the diabetes? And she said, actually, I'm, you know, I'm vegan and I'm working with a, a nutritionist and we're actually going to go the opposite direction. And I'm going to go super high, super high carb and very, very low fat mm -hmm. because, and this is what's taught in the vegan community, fat gums up your insulin receptors. Mm -hmm. And that's why, and that's what causes diabetes. Yeah. That's yeah. so She's actually doubling down on the vegan. And yeah. I have a feeling when I see her in six months, her diabetes is not going to be better. <laughs> yeah, that, that's sort of all the, the mastering diabetes uh, sort of philosophy where they, I mean, they limit the grams of fat to like under 10 grams a day. And they even, they even count the fat in fruit. And you're like, mm -hmm. you're, you're really, really restricting it to almost no fat. And what it allows them to do, particularly like the type one diabetes, they can take, they can have more carbs and use a little bit less insulin, but they never... You look at their studies and, and they really, I mean, their hemoglobin A1C never really gets below six. Whereas people on keto and carnivore, they often have completely normal hemoglobin at five, it's routinely under five, five, and sometimes under five. And this thought that fat is, you know, you know, particularly in the form of things like ceramides are, you know, interfering with the insulin receptor. And there's some truth to that. The problem they don't tell you is that the fat that's in the blood is not from the fat you eat. It's from the fat that your liver makes. And that can be done. That can be due to overconsumption of anything it can over overconsumption of saturated fat overconsumption of fructose overconsumption of carbs and so that's the part they leave out you know because they, they just say well this saturated fat in your blood is gumming up the receptor but it's not necessarily yeah. coming from the saturated that's fat what i wanted blood. to say to her is yeah. is your diet very high in fat now because mm -hmm. you know she's thinking that you know yeah. she's got too much you know she's She's probably not eating that much fat now, so why would that make sense, you know? Yeah, and there are some there are some definite problems when you get really, really low fat. There are just there are just you know numerous issues that they go. That we'll see, you know, you'll see maybe you'll see her in six months for her next follow up, and you know you'll see if it, you know sometimes you just get an impression when somebody walks in a room, you're like, oh my gosh, you know, you're not looking too good. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. It's kind of one of those those visual yeah. things. Does a dentist, the dentist or dentist that work in your clinic, do they ever discuss diet? Is that ever part of their repertoire? Is it just pop in, you know, peek in the mouth and pop back out? Yeah. It, it again, it's pretty much limited to, you know, try to cut out the uh, soda mm -hmm. or limit your soda, limit, you know, sugary snacks. And, you know, it's, it's a really kind of very, cursory, not very deep. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Do you find any difficulty? I mean, you said you feel like you're getting stronger. Do you, do you add, let me ask you about it. Cause this is a, a sort of a, I don't know, I won't call it a controversy, but there's different, some people have different thoughts on this. How do you stay hydrated? Do you, do you add, do you have some electrolytes? Do you salt your food? Do you, do you not do any of that stuff? How do you deal with, with hydration? Um, I've always loved salt. So I use a lot of salt on my food. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I do use electrolytes. I've been going back and forth. I tried the like element and now I'm trying keto chow, mm -hmm. but I just use their recommended, you know, whatever you add it to like 24 ounces. And I kind of drink that throughout the day and I take a magnesium supplement at night and that's about it. Okay. So no issues with heart palpitations or cramping or things like that or blood pressure issues. No, actually, I was getting a little bit of leg cramps here and there, but I think when I kind of adjust the the electrolytes during the day, mm -hmm. that's kind of has fixed that. Okay. And, uh, you know, since you're cooking more meat for yourself, does that translate into the rest of your, your, your one child at home and your, and your husband eating more meat? Do they, are they, they okay with that? Oh yeah, they're okay with that. They're fine with that. And then it's for a while I was making some side dishes for them. You know, I'd make a vegetable or some rice or whatever, 
But now it's gotten to the point I'll say, you know, you want me to make you some rice? And they're like, nah. So they just just meat now too. So at least one one of their meals a day is usually carnivore. <laughs> yeah, just give me an extra steak. I'll take a side of steak with the steak. Yeah, it's kind of funny yeah. with that. While you were, you know, because you, your family was never vegan. So, I mean, I, I would imagine you didn't get too far into the ideologic rabbit hole, you know, and some people would say you were never a vegan because you, it's impossible mm-hmm. for you to be a vegan if you you know, you, you never were if you sometimes stop. So the only way you can truly be a vegan is, I guess, if you die a vegan. But you, ne- I guess you never really got into the animal animal rights and all that stuff. Is no. that fair to say? Not really. No, it was always about health first. Mm-hmm. I mean, you kind of do at some point kind of feel a little bit like, oh, I'm not, you know, or you think you're not harming animals anyway. Mm-hmm. You know, you kind of get a little bit of a whatever feel good thing about uh, out of it. But it was never the major part yeah, at all. Yeah. Okay. So, so technically they would say you're, well, you were just plant-based and you're a plant-based yeah. poser. You were never really a vegan type of thing, but yep. that aside, I mean, it's, you know, I've seen, I cannot tell you, and, and a lot of the people in this meeting right now were ex-vegans, you know, they spent years doing plant-based diets and just didn't work for them. Um, and your friend, as far as you can tell, how long has she been vegan? Just out of curiosity, she's, she's been working for her like years and years or. Yeah. I want to say like at least 12 years. Okay. Yeah. 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 Interesting. You know, I've, I've actually in consultation, have seen a lot of folks that have been 20 plus years, sometimes 30 years. And eventually they, they like, I just couldn't do it anymore. I, you know, it got to me and I just got too sick from that. So it'll be interesting to see. It's interesting yeah. to see that some people seemingly do reasonably well on this, but a huge percentage of people do not. And, um, well, I, I know it not, maybe not in upstate New York, it's probably a little different than, you know, New York City, which, you know, most people think, you know, New York City, they're banning meat from the schools and on a couple of days a week and they're trying to go, they get their, med, their, their mayor, Eric, Eric Adams, suggesting people live a, I think he called it a plant-based centered life or some, some, something like that. Do you have any thoughts about sort of people foisting plant-based diets on the rest of the population and kind of, you know, trying to say, hey, we're going to, we need to give up meat to save the planet. What are your thoughts on that sort of rhetoric? Oh, I, that's another topic that gets me going. (laughs) I, I watch a lot of that stuff. I watch a lot about kind of all this global planning, you know, that's going on and, you know, there's kind of an agenda behind it all. And I think it's craziness. I think it's a lot of control, a lot of, we're going in a bad way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I you know, I, I just, I'm heartened, you know, I saw like the Italians just basically recently either mm. passed or passing legislation saying, no, we're not going to allow any bugs in pasta or breads or baked goods. And no, we're not going to allow lab grown meat. You know, the things that, you know, some people mm. are pushing on this is, again, this is just this hyper processed food that, I mean, is, is clearly killing everybody. It's a shame to see that. Have you, sort of, and I don't know, you said you talk about it and people get sick of hearing about it. <laughs> have you, have you successfully swayed someone to, to give this a try since you've been, since you've been doing this for this short period of time? Um, I think I've gotten a few people thinking, mm-hmm. I haven't gotten anybody to, you know, commit or to it, but I have some, some people's wheels spinning, I think. <laughs> One of the criticisms people will say is this is just too expensive. I can't afford to eat, you know, meat every day. What What are your thoughts on that? I mean, have you noticed a significant? Because I mean, a vegan diet eating six times a day, I guess that could kind of be expensive, unless you're eating beans and rice all day. But I mean, how does that compare financially for for you guys in the family, or for you in particular? I buy so much less other stuff, you know. Other, you know, I stop bringing junk food into the house. You know, there's so many things I'm not buying now. It kind of makes up for, um, you know, what I am buying. I try to find good sales and I'm just eating regular, you know, store meat. I'm, you know, I'm not, if I can find good grass fed, you know, on sale or I have a farm locally that, you know, maybe I'll grab some stuff from there. But for the most part, I'm just getting everything from the store. Yeah. And despite it, cause a lot of people are critical of that and say, well, it's not very good quality meat and you know, you're going to, but I mean, I've seen repeatedly people that do exactly what you do. They go to the supermarket, they buy whatever steaks on sale or ground beef and mm-hmm. they get remarkably healthy. So, I mean, it, it seems yeah. to be a, a very, very good source of, of nutrition and food for us. Um, do you, ha- I mean, any thoughts of like, Hey, I want to start reintroducing foods at a certain point. I mean, some people end up doing that. Is that something you've entertained or thought about? Are you pretty much happy where you are right now? 
for the most part, I'm pretty, pretty happy where I am. I know vegetables will not be back. I know grains won't be. I'm not completely opposed to a, a piece of fruit every now and again. Mm-hmm. I think I had a handful of blueberries last week. <laughs> Other than that, that's about it. I just feel too good. Yeah. That, and fair enough. I mean, that's, I'm, I'm the same way. I don't, I've got, if I never eat another vegetable the rest of my life, I, I don't, there's no, I won't admit, I never liked them in the first place. I, you know, it was one of those things where, you know, you wonder why all these kids are like fighting you and their little babies. I don't want that to get that away from me. And then you, we kind of force them and trick them. And, you know, I've seen, you know, like you, you try to put a little spoon or something that they like, and then you swap it for a vegetable real quick and, you know, yeah. do the old switch. It's funny kids. Yeah. My son has always hated vegetables, mm-hmm. always. Mm-hmm. And it always used to be a battle. I'm like, come on, you got to just you gotta eat some, you know, and then now I tell him, I go, it looks like you were around to something. <laughs> now he gets a pass. He doesn't need to eat vegetables now. <laughs> yeah, that's my kids. I, I say, if you guys want them, I'll cook them, but they never want them. And so I never cook. They'll, they'll, they'll have, you know, they'll eat some fruit and they'll eat you know, a few other things, but vegetables are pretty un, pretty unusual in, in our house for sure mm. uh, what do you think about you know like like as someone who, you know at cornell they probably told you you know the benefits of fiber 25 grams a day or something is a, is a target you know something along those lines and now you're eating effectively none mm. uh, how does that work i mean is it because you know the, we would think oh you're going to be constipated all the time and you've got all this fiber that's going to fill you up and provide all this satiety and all these things so what do you what are your thoughts about not including fiber in your diet now I'm not concerned. I'm not worried about it. I I know that my digestion feels really good right now and it's working well and it's not interfering with my life. <laughs> so I'm good. Yeah, it's funny, you know, people, you know, when people say well fibers, you know, a lot and when you had IBS, they they still didn't there were no sort of say hey, eat more fiber, eat less fiber, nothing. No 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 instructions on diet. Um I I think my gastroenterologist gave me a FODMAP diet to try. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was like an elimination diet. Um, but he didn't, I don't think he really pushed fiber or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, that was the closest he came to recommend any diet recommendations at all was the FODMAP diet. Yeah. And, some, and, and people do implement that. And some people do get some benefit from that for sure. But I think, again, I think a carnivore diet tends to be more, more, powerful than that in many, many, mm-hmm. many, many cases. Are you, do you, I mean, I don't know if you have any sort of online presence. Do you do any social media type stuff or anything like that? Talk about this stuff. I, I had a Facebook group, which funny enough, started out as a vegan group. <laughs> okay. And I used to post like recipes there and things like that. And, and then it has morphed and now it is, Hasn't fully come out as carnivore, but I've put up a lot of information uh, heading that direction, more or less kind of preparing people that this, you know, it's not a very big group. So there's only about a hundred people in it, Mm -hmm. but uh, that's about it. I have an Instagram, but it's mostly, it's not for influence or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and since, you know, shifting out of veganism on your Facebook group, have some of the people said, Hey, this is how dare you type of stuff, or are they been okay with that? No, I really haven't had any comments that uh, people who like the informational comment, I think the people are kind of a little concerned, just haven't said anything. <laughs> so, yeah, it's been, I haven't had any feet pushback yet. <laughs> what are, you know, and this is something I always, when I, when I go to the grocery store and I've got, you know, I got a cart full of meat and eggs, typically, you know, nothing, pretty much nothing else, maybe some cleaning products or something like that. And I get in line, there's somebody who's got, you know, baskets full of, you know, organic fruits and vegetables. And I just kind of look at them like, well, where's, where's, where's the actual food? There's, there's in my view, I, 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 I don't see any, you know, any real nutrition there. I see a lot of fiber that's going to you know, fill you up, but not really provide a lot of nutrition. Do you, do you ever get a sense to just go like, you know, want to just shake somebody and say, wake up and, and do that? Or do you, what do you, I mean, do you, when, when you observe the world right now and you see all these obese people and all these people struggling with chronic disease. Do you ever just like look, want to just kind of say, Hey, there, this is, there's a fix for this. Yeah. That's what's funny when you, you know, kind of go down this road is you really see everything that's really going on. And you start to think it could be so much easier for people. Like it shouldn't be this hard. Health could be so much easier. if We just 
understood this. And um, I don't know, it's like you see things really differently all of a sudden. It's like kind of stepping out of the matrix. I don't know. <laughs> it, it really is kind of. Thank you. Well, I'll tell you what, Gina, we are almost out of time. And so is there anything else you want to share? Any other any other information you, you, you failed to mention? Just real quickly, one of the big motivators also for me is now learning all this stuff is about Alzheimer's disease and how, you know, they call it like type three diabetes. And my grandmother developed Alzheimer's in her late fifties and my mother in her early sixties. So, you know, now learning and knowing what I know, it's just really reinforced my decision, you know, knowing that I've made a good decision, because that's been a, a really big fear of mine, my whole life is developing Alzheimer's. And I really think all the health things that I went through all my life was just like early metabolic changes. Like we've got a lot of diabetes in my family, got Alzheimer's in my family. And I think it was, I think I was on that path of having metabolic problems. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it, it just knowing that really helps me stay, you know, this, this is definitely for me, this is something I, I have to do. Yeah. Well, just on that, since I forgot to ask about it, mood cognition, any, any mental benefits from doing this? Have you noticed a difference there? Oh, just, I used to have a lot of anxiety mm -hmm. and I just don't anymore. And I'm just, you know, I remember being tired all the time. You just kind of slog through life and do what you got to do. I'm getting up extra early now. And then I, I'm like bouncing through my day. I feel happier. I'm, I, I'll put in nine hour work day and then go to the gym for an hour and a half and then come home and do all my chores. Like, I'm just, I just feel like I've reset the clock. Like I'm, I have full of energy. I'm happy. I'm upbeat. Uh, anxiety. I, I never have any, any anxiety anymore. So it's, it's just been such a blessing. It's just been amazing well good for you and I, you know like you said you're putting more life into your years right and, and, and maybe in hopefully more years into your life but um one last comment because charlie commented on how nice your hair looks and so do you notice any differences in hair and skin and nails or anything because a lot of people do a lot of a lot of women notice that their nails are stronger and their hair is thicker any oh change, yeah any changes my hair there? thicker okay my hair is thicker my skin feels great yeah my nails grow fast everything grows fast but yeah, I'm just waiting for it to reverse wrinkles. <laughs> awesome. Well, anyway, well, Gina, thank you so much for doing this. Appreciate it. And good luck to you with your continued success. And maybe one day we'll hear about your vegan friend finally capitulating <laughs> and saying we're going to change. So anyway, thanks so much. Thank, thank you for everything you do, doctor. Appreciate it. Thanks. All right, guys, we will see you guys tomorrow. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Hey folks, it's Dr. Sean Baker here. If you guys are enjoying these success stories, well, you can become your own success story. You can do that by heading over to carnivore.diet. You can sign up for a free 30-day trial and get started today. We're looking forward to supporting you. Our community is wonderful, and we'd love to see your success.